I just bought myself a Rad Rover fad bike to use as a winter bicycle. Since I hate unboxing videos, I'll get to the point and I'll take only 7 minutes of your time to show you the entire bike. This is my new Rad Rover fat bike, built like a tank, comfortable as a limousine. It's a massive machine weighing in at 69 pounds, even though the step through frame is made of aluminum. It comes complete as you see it, except for the rear rack and mirror, which I bought separately. The most striking feature, of course, is the huge tires. The big 26 by 4 inch wide puncture resistant tires are protected with an integrated tire liner. The rims are double wall and the 12 gauge spokes give added strength to the wheels for carrying heavy loads. Note the reflective sidewalls for nighttime safety. Front and rear PVC fenders which are held in place with stainless steel hardware give my shoes and pants protection against flashing water and slush. The Befang hub motor has a 5 to 1 planetary gear reduction. It runs on 48 volts and 500 watts. Because it has cadence sensing, it engages when I either turn the pedals or activate the throttle. The company claims that it gives 80 newton meters of torque. The 48 volt 14 amp hour battery, which is located on the seat tube, delivers 672 watt-hours of battery capacity, which is better than average. Behind the battery is the controller. This is a computer that communicates between the electric components of the bike, that is, the throttle, the speed sensor, the display, the battery, the motor, and the brake cutoffs. It's a 7-speed Shimano Acera derailleur at the rear, and a 7-sprocket freewheel. Up front, there's a single chain ring with a double chain guard, which prevents the chain from falling off and keeps my pants away from the chain. The platform pedals are forged aluminum and they have reflectors. The seat post has a quick-release lever and the saddle is plush and quite comfortable. It also has a lifting handle. And the down tube is equipped with a set of bosses for attaching a water bottle holder. For providing comfort, the bike has a front suspension fork with 80 millimeters of travel and with lockout and preload adjustment. It has a powerful headlight. Above the fork on the head tube, there are four bosses for attaching a large front rack specially designed by RAD for its bicycles. The handlebars are custom formed aluminum with a 4 inch rise which makes for a comfortable semi upright seating position. And it has comfortable hand grips. The Rad Rover has a half-twist throttle which works very well. The gears are operated with this Shimano 7-speed thumb shifter. It has a clear display that tells me what gear I'm in. The liquid crystal display is backlit when I turn on the lights. Starting from the top left, I have a battery fuel gauge that tells me the residual charge from 5 bars to 0 bars. To the right of that is the odometer, which can double as a trip meter. Strangely, it only shows up to 9,999 kilometers or miles. I was kind of hoping this bike would last longer than that. The large number underneath is the speedometer, which can be set to current speed, max speed, or average speed. The bottom left shows the pedal assist from level 1 to level 5, 
and the number at the right is the watt meter which shows how much power the motor is drawing from the battery at a given time. And hidden underneath the display, where we can hardly see it, is a USB port that gives enough power to trickle charge a cell phone. The bicycle gets its instructions from this display remote pad. The up and down arrows select the amount of assistance the motor provides. The mode button turns the system on and off and turns the lights on and off, aside from selecting odometer and speed parameters. When I received the bike, the electric wire that feeds the rear light was severed. I'm waiting for a new one to come. The instructions say that it has three functions. It acts like a tail light when it's always on, as a brake light when the brakes are applied, or it can be set to flash continuously by activating a rubber button under the light housing. It has an excellent kickstand which is placed so it doesn't interfere with the pedals. It's so frustrating when you're backing up your bike and the pedals jam against the kickstand. And having the kickstand further back makes it possible to turn the pedals backward while the bike is stationary, which makes it easy to clean and oil the chain without having to put the bike on a repair stand. The mechanical brakes use 180 mm rotors at the rear and at the front. They are activated by comfortable aluminum alloy grip levers with motor cut off, an integrated bell that has a pleasant sound that doesn't scare pedestrians out of their wits. The Rad Rover Step Through is a lot of bike for $2100 Canadian. As for the quality, I don't know. Time will tell. For now, I'll be testing the bike under different winter riding conditions and I'll report to you in a later YouTube video. If you'd like to see more information about electric bicycles, bicycle campers, or bicycle touring, or if you'd like to buy one of my books on sailing, visit my website www.robertberio.com. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red icon at the bottom right of your screen. And until next time, remember, never quit cycling.